they're still in contact. So we've had we've had folks that have developed friendships out of that week long stay, where they've returned and visited each other. We've had those folks come over here. Our folks go back over there and visit the families. He said it's, it's really amazing the bond that these students will build just in the week there. Um, and of course, your children live in, in the era of Facebook, and so it's you know. When you were growing up, when I was growing up, we had to call somebody on the phone or write a letter. Your kids live in an era where they're going to be connected forever with anybody that they've even like just been introduced to it's on Facebook. So the opportunity, and you know, I said it kind of lightly, but honestly, the opportunity is that once they go there and they spend that week, I mean, they could be in daily contact with these people if they if they so choose. That's, that's a pretty wonderful opportunity. And so I said, yeah, you know, that's I agree, that's great. But I don't, I don't think that alone is going to be is going to convince the parents. And so here's here are the specifics of the homestay program. They're they're laid out in here as well. Uh, the host families themselves don't receive any kind of like they don't get paid to do it. Now the schools do use it as a fundraiser. That money does not go back to the host families directly. So they're not getting they're not doing it because they want to get the money as part of it. That's that's not the issue at all. They do it because they want to be involved in this. And here's how they try to match up students as much as possible. They typically put at least two of the American kids in each one of the Australian homes because that gives, you know, well, that's a lot. You know, a ninth grader or just finished ninth grade, you want to take them to Australia and say, go live with that family for a week. That's, that's kind of a lot of pressure on the child. So they try to pair up our students. So somebody there that they know. They also try as much as possible. Well, they, they will put boys in, in the homes with boy students, girls in the homes with girl students. They try to match them up as much as possible by grade so that our ages and, and our, our ages, you know, gender, all similar. And so we, we sort of build some comfort there as well. And they go through the process on their end of, of vetting out the families that they do and don't allow to basically to house our students. If we were to do the same thing, if, if, if we were to host a, an international school here, no offense, but we know who we would put somebody in, in the house, right? So, you know, and, I, and that's, just, that's just part of it in big organizations. So they know, you know, they, they vet their people out and they're not going to put your child in a home where they shouldn't be. And so he says, in 22 years we've been doing this, he said we have had never a problem at all. Um, there's not a problem with alcohol, okay, so you think, well, my, my kid's going to go over here and the legal drinking age is 18, you know, that's not a surprise, you can find that out on the internet. Uh, that doesn't happen, okay. The, the, the parents that are in charge, the alcohol has never been an issue. Uh, they don't throw big parties for the kids. Now, they do because uh, this is, the school will be somewhere in a suburban part of Sydney. Uh, a lot of times, multiple families will come together. So we will be living in the same neighborhood. And a good example here might be Lakeside. Okay, if we host if we host a, an international group here, we send them home, and we're likely to have in the band five or six families in Lakeside that are hosting some students. So, so they would all get together. So it's kind of the same thing. They would all get together and have a cookout, but always in a very controlled uh, in a very controlled atmosphere, and always in a in a situation where the adults are going to be in charge. Uh, your child is not going to go over there and load up in the car. Your daughter's not going to jump in the car with a 16-year-old Australian boy and, and take off. It's, it's a very controlled environment. Okay, and so he said, we, we've just never had any problems. And I said, well, okay, but you're still trying to sell it to me. So he said, okay, here's what I'll do. He said, I'll send you references. He said, you talk to, to any of them. As a matter of fact, I've talked to all of them, and I'll show you the page. He sent me a page and a half of directors and what, what school they're at, what their contact information is. And some of these folks are college folks. I didn't, call, I didn't contact the college band directors because I'm not taking a college group. <coughs> I'm taking a high school group. So the folks that I talked with were high school band directors, orchestra directors, or choir directors that have done the festival. The second question I always asked them was about the opera house performance. They all said it was great. The first question I asked them about was, tell me about the homestead program. And every single one of them said the same thing. <laughs> Every single director I talked to said the home state program on the front end, as the person that was ultimately responsible for it, the home state program made me very nervous on the front end. 
And they said, so they went through the same process I did. They went and they talked to the other folks, got the references and called them. They said, you know what, I was very skeptical on skeptical. Yes, on the front end, I called the references, we did it, and every single director said, if I do this again, and one of them had one, I'm going to done it twice. If and when I do this again, I would never do it any other way, without exception. They said the homestay program is, is the only way to do it for the students because they get so much more exposure to just the culture and the daily life that you don't get it. If we do this trip and we take them back to the hotel at 8 o'clock every night, then there's just so much of, of, of the interaction with the other students their age. Remember, that's who you're interacting with. Okay? They're going to go over there and be maybe in the house with another trumpet player. So they've got all these common interests and, and common bonds with this international student, and they, and they have so much opportunity for the interaction. And so every single one of them said, it made me nervous on the front end. We did it. There were zero problems. The Australian families were great. And when we do this again, I'll never do it any other way. And that was without exception. And I've talked talk to probably eight or ten. Every one of them said, I would never, having done it, I would never do it another way. And so, I mean, for, from my end, I'm skeptical of the, the festival organizer who's trying to convince me to do it. I believe the other directors because they have the same uh, responsibility to take their students there and bring them back safely that I do to your students. And so, you know, they're, and I've had folks call me about things before, and you're going to be honest about that. Uh, if you've had a bad experience with a home this state program in another country, you're not going to sell it to somebody else. You're going to be honest with them. And every single person said, this is the only way to do it. It was the most meaningful part of the trip for the students was without a doubt the home state program. One guy told me, he said, we've done a number of international trips with the band program here. And they've been to Europe and they went to like Austria and Spain and all of these places. And he said, I've been doing international trips with this group for a lot of years. And he said, this trip was the only trip, and he said, I think this guy did it twice. He said, both times we went to Australia, we're loading the airplane. He said, the kids are in tears when they're leaving. He said, you know, when we go to, to Spain, and it's like, whoo, let's go home. And we're, you know, we're in Europe, and like, that's great, let's roll. And in Australia, we're getting back on the plane. He said, the kids are crying when they leave because it's been such a meaningful experience to them. And for me to be able, for us to be able to offer that to them, I think is, is, is really a wonderful opportunity. Uh, your next page, and a lot of specifics about the homestay program there. Please read that page at home. The next page, travel tips in Australia. Uh, most of that stuff, again, is, is to read at home. Uh, you, your child will need, you or your child will need a passport that's not included in the cost that we'll talk about in a second. The passport, I think, currently is $135. Uh, the last paragraph on this page is Visa. Uh, the visa to travel to Australia for what we're doing has been replaced by, it's called Electronic Travel Authority, it's ETA. So you'll hear us refer from time to time to the ETA. It's not estimated time of arrival in, in this instance. It's ETA is Electronic Travel Authority that, that replaced the visa. That is included in the price that we'll talk about. So passport is not the ETA, the replacement for visa is included in the price, which takes us to the last page. Okay, and this is the page that if you were here before, you didn't get. So this is, this is cost breakdown and it's a payment schedule. I want to cover this, and then I want to leave time for some questions. We'll talk about some fundraising opportunities, but we'll cover this. We'll leave time for some questions. But basically, the student and the performer cost is $26.95 per person. That includes airfare from Atlanta to there and back. It includes... The, the electronic travel authority. Uh, it includes airport taxes, fees, fuel surcharges, all of that things. All of those things are included in that price. For the students, now remember the students are doing the homestay program. So the reason if you look at the next line for the chaperone or adult or family cost is higher, but the chaperone adult family folks are in a hotel. Uh, the students are not. And the, so the, the chaperone adult family cost includes each night in a hotel, uh, also breakfast each day is included there. So that one's a little bit higher. Now, a little bit about the hotel, and as it relates to where it is and, and in relation to where your students are gonna be. What he does for the adults and the additional family members and basically anybody that's not a performer, that's not in the homestay program. 
the school, whatever school that we're partnered up with is going to be out in the suburbs somewhere. And that's no different than, you know, Sydney is a city the size of London, New York. It's, it's a major, major city. And so the suburbs there are not a whole lot different than the suburbs here. And so, you know, we, we have our own suburban areas.